Welcome back to the Comic Book Report, and today we are reading Ultimate Comics Spider-Man. Now, Sam, I'm going to need you to explain uh, the backstory and what this is about and what they're trying to do here, because I don't really understand. Okay, so the Ultimate Comics Universe was launched in like the mid-2000s, early mid-2000s, um, as a way to like update uh, comic, update Marvel Comics in a way, but without erasing all of the history and all of the characters that they currently had. Mm -hmm. So this was a whole new universe. It wasn't like a reset. It wasn't anything like that. It was a separate line of comics mm -hmm. that I'm pretty sure was running concurrently with the main universe. Okay. Um, and there weren't like huge changes to most characters. It was just like updating them um, in terms of time, not like changing who they are too drastically. And when they did they did this for all the superheroes, not just Spider-Man? Pretty much everybody, yeah. Okay. And this is just the most recent version of that? Like when did this come out? Um, this particular one, I can't remember. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Sorry. Uh, well, let's just get into the book then. I, I read this thing in one day. Uh, and I, I have a lot of problems with this book, and I don't, I'm not particularly interested by, like, this is supposed to be an origin story for the little black guy there. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not interested to read any more about this little fuck and his problems, because I just, I can't, there's nothing that's really interesting about him, and, uh, like, it, it doesn't help that this book is hard to read, because at some points, you, you know, in a regular comic book, you start on top, you go down, then you go to the next page, top, go down. Yeah. This goes from sometimes it starts it does the regular way. Sometimes it does top and goes across, then starts in the middle, then goes down, then the middle again on the other side and goes down. Like it's not consistent page to page. That is to like at least from what I've read, yeah, where you kind of have to piece it together. It's I've been able to follow it most of the time, but I mean I can go back and follow it afterwards, but it's yeah. just kind of like I don't want I want to read it all together. I don't want to read the end of the of the quote and then go back and see what was in between. Cause then, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I, I just never saw anything back because in Naruto, like, it's easily easy, up and down, up and down. And I like it like that. Well, why make it, why even do it like that? It, make it makes it harder to read. Artistic choices, man. I don't know. All right. well, that's fine. They can have that. Um, I, uh, I was joking when I first read this in my notes. I'm like, this is the affirmative action universe. Because why is he like the stereotypical black guy? Like, what are they, what are they going for in this? I just, I just don't understand. And what is that makes him so appealing besides that he's black? Well, he's like, he's a kid that a lot of uh, kids can relate to. Is he? He's an it, probably. Like, how often, maybe, because we don't live in a pretty, we don't live that in that big of a city where we have to do charter school lotteries. You just go to whatever school you want. They do have charter they school do? lotteries down here. Yeah. They do? Yeah. Or they did right after the storm. Okay. Well, that that makes sense, though. Cause yeah. Not too many schools. Well, I, I didn't have to get, get into a lottery. I just went to school. But I just don't know. Is that really, like, they made a whole event out of that, like, when the book. Yeah, like, that's common. That's really... That's fucked up. Because the people, of course, they're going to cheer because their kid got into school and then everyone who didn't get in is going to be really sad because I didn't. Like, this is the opportunity for my kid to get into school. That's like, yeah. that's that's really fucked up. That's, that's the one thing. That's the highlight of the book. It showed me that. Well, I mean, considering that, like, every school in New Orleans is a charter school. Yeah. At this point, I. Mm. it's a little different. Okay. I mean, in New York, where they have, like, two or whatever per district. They're very few. And everything else is public school? Yeah. And they're bad? And charter yeah, schools are good? Okay. School. That's nice. Okay, that, that was something that was interesting. But the character himself, like, what, I don't get, like, what's he supposed to be, what's supposed to be interesting about him? He's just, like, a kid that's struggling and now he's Spider-Man. He gets bit by a spider. He's an inner-city kid with inner-city problems. Okay. And now he's in... In addition to the charter school thing being a way to like bring him out of that life, now he's got spider powers. I want a guy that's cool, like Barry Allen, cool. Uh, okay. Superman, cool. Batman. Disagree there, but okay. 
Well, I mean, uh, the idea of his, like, all the powers he had, that, that's cool. He doesn't, have, he doesn't yeah. need to be a complex person. Batman, cool guy. Yeah. Um, Miles Morales, he's just, he's just a kid. Is he supposed to be in high school, by the way? I think so. Cause like, I, young high school. Okay. Because uh, they all come off like kids when dude's playing with Legos. Old middle, yeah, he's, like, older middle school. Okay. At this point. All right. Um... I don't, I don't know. Do you have, like, what do you feel about the book from what you got from it? I thought it was pretty good. Um, I was just interested to see where this went. I'm still interested to see where it goes. I guess. Because they made a big deal about the death of Peter Parker. Is that, so this is, is part of the whole universe, so Peter Parker's dead through, like, that's in the ultimate In the Ultimate Comics universe, yes. Okay. Not in the main universe. All right. Well, I'm interested too how they handle that. But they kind of, I talking about his death. He was wearing his like a replica of Spider-Man's uh, uniform, and like at multiple uh, times they were like, "Oh, that's that's in bad taste or whatever." And like when he was at the, uh, he went to uh, he's passed by by a bar, and the guy named I think his name was Kangaroo or whatever, and he was beating up some guy for not paying him his cut of like uh, robbery money. Or whatever, and he said, "You know, I'll beat you to death, or whatever." And then uh, Miles comes in and try to save the day, beats up the kangaroo, and uh, finds out how strong he is and how like a lot of people have superpowers, uh, or like mutants, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when he was like about to finish doing whatever, about to leave, the guy that was beaten up, robber, and this guy robbed banks, maybe like regular stores, he's a criminal, and he told Spider Man. This hero, this aspiring hero, that that's in bad taste. And they, and multiple times, it's kept saying that it's in bad taste. I'm like, is that supposed to be some type of joke? Because obviously, everyone else here is the scum telling this guy what's wrong. Well, I mean, Spider Man was. Peter Parker Spider Man was a beloved hero. Mm -hmm. He was a hero to pretty much everyone in the city. Like, even, even the criminals, for the most part, respected him. Mm -hmm. And then when they all know he dies, and a lot of them saw him die. Mm -hmm. And then you just have some kid walking around in, in a costume store, like a party city version of his of his costume. How are you supposed to take that? How would you feel if someone started dressing up like your best friend? That's what I was about to ask you. Trying to be your best friend. What if what if somebody died and I had to find somebody else to do this with and they that person came in and walked in in your skin? And that that'd be kinda weird. I'm like, it depends how they say it. Because he said it, I'm trying to honor Spider Man. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, I get that. But I'm like, I don't know. I took it as he's trying to honor them. That's very respectful. But he did it like immediately. Immediately after Peter Parker died. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about his Miles, Miles' uncle. He, he had the house with the spider that bit Miles that gave him all those powers. Do you know his backstory at all besides um, him going to jail? Prowler. The Prowler. He, or he's the ultimate comics version of the Prowler. Um, he's kind of a petty thief. Or as petty as there. He's not like a huge, a huge supervillain. Mm -hmm. But he's uh, fairly, fairly good at what he does. I guess you could say. Um, he's wanted by the FBI, so that's that's about the level he's at. So he's pretty good. Yeah, I guess. Um, and he's. Like, people know exactly who he is, um, or by people, I mean, S.H.I.E.L.D. knows his secret identity, which most villains and heroes don't do. His secret they identity like is that. his identity as a regular, regular citizen? Or... Um, yeah, it's something Davis, I think. Yeah, I think whatever, Uncle Davis or whatever. Aaron Davis. Aaron a Davis. A Aaron, there you yeah. go. That's what it was. But why do you have the spider, like... Why did he have the spider in his house? He stole something from, I think it was Oscorp. Oh, he was stealing, okay. He stole something from a company that had the spiders. Mm -hmm. And then the spiders, like, one of the spiders crawled into his bag. Mm -hmm. And then found its way home. He wasn't, he wasn't the, uh, the scientist that the Green Goblin told, that, that assigned, he's not the one with the four doctorates? I don't think so. Okay, that was a different person. Okay, yeah. so he did steal it. Um, so they didn't have many villains that they were introducing. Like they had, like, talked about Green Goblin a little bit. Like he talked to the, he assigned that scientist 
like he bought out his contract and said if you uh, like if this information gets out of this lab I'll kill you but if you if you tell me some you tell me a lot of information I'll make I'll make all your dreams come true basically um what what's what's Green Goblin's backstory like is he a mutant or is he he's a mutate so he got his genes altered after birth yes so is Spider-Man mutated as well then? yeah okay but um I don't know anything about Ultimate Comics Green Goblin I don't know much about it but um some in some cases he has a disease that like disfigures him and so he takes a serum wasn't that in the movies like in the first three yeah yeah probably <laughs> well that, yeah it was the third one that was one of them. one of the two movies that they've made okay. uh you, you were saying something more about him though you were trying to say something more about green album yeah he's just uh he just took a super serum so i guess he's not really a mutate i wouldn't say I don't know how much that altered his genes, but it's a super soldier serum of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed uh, about like uh, like when they were talking, there were a lot of censored cursing, like when you can't curse in front of children, Mark. But one of the children were cursing though. Uh, the little boy, like Miles' friend, was saying like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And Genki, then yeah. yeah, Genki. He and then Spider Woman, which is like one of Miles' classmates. Uh, said, who the fuck do you think you are? What is like all like hashtag at sign all exclamation mark all that stuff? Yeah, because you can't curse in front of the children that are reading it. But why? But why have that in there? Then like you just put freaking. <laughs> okay. Because it's realistic that people curse, but it's unrealistic that children read curse words. <laughs> I don't care. Honestly, that long, <laughs> they can do whatever. Uh. I don't. I don't know. I had some quotes written down that I just thought were funny. Like Legos are dope. Yeah, Legos are dope. You still play with Legos? No, but mm. I play the Lego video games. If I can get my hands on them. Oh, I have one. I have a couple actually. I have one from the PS2. I have one for the GameCube. It was, for the GameCube, it's Lego Star Wars. Mm, cool. Yeah, and it's hard to play. Like, maybe you can. Maybe you like it. Uh, is this a trope in uh, comic books where? The hero gets the powers against his will, and then that first, like, he has to get used to having this big responsibility. Yes. Mm, I felt that. Um, With great power, there must also great, come great, great responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me for quoting it right. No, no, I'm not. I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about they use that a lot. And I, I don't know. I just, I, you don't know where it goes, right? You don't know the story goes, right? Not exactly, no. Okay. Let me look at it this way. The people that are searching for power, almost always bad people. Yeah. Or the people that search for, like, abnormal power. Well, yeah, most of the time. Then you have people like Batman that just, he's made his own power and he's a good guy. Yeah. Like, the best good guy there is because he... He gets the criminals and doesn't kill them. That's that's really cool. I mean, I would fucking blow their brains out because I don't want them walking my streets anymore. That's just me. That's why I don't have superpowers. Uh, well, let's uh, I want to wrap this up. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, most of my notes are just saying like writing down every time that people said that was in bad taste. Like I get it. And then at the end, little uh, uh evolution of character Miles was like maybe this is in bad taste. And then he got a new uniform, all yeah, black. Got a new suit. Yeah. I really like the suit. It's my favorite spider suit. Yeah, I like it. Black and red. Uh, I got a question. I know it's not in the book, but it's, I mean, it's related to Spider-Man because I'm asking about Venom. What is his role uh, in the Spider-Man universe, like throughout the multiple stories? What, what has been his role? Okay, so the Venom symbiote was found by Peter Parker in space. Or it crashed in New York City from space, depending on what you're reading or watching. Okay. It attached itself to Peter and it like it brings out your aggressive attributes. Or like a lot of negative attributes. Aggressiveness, confidence. It brings them out to a to a negative, I guess I should say. Because those aren't inherently bad mm -hmm. things. Um and for a while that it was attached to Spider Man, he had this thing called the black suit. Mm -hmm. And it 
he was a much different Spider-Man when he was connected to the Venom symbiote. But then it left him through some means of something. Loud noise is its, is its weakness, so I would I would guess loud noise had to figure in somewhere. So how does he survive in the city then, in New York City? I don't fucking know. All right. Uh, I wonder how that plays in like you know Venom, black suit, black and white, with a white guy Peter Parker. Will he be all white for this black guy right here since they want to be opposite all the time? Um, oh, Spider Woman. Uh, yeah, Jessica Drew. Is that? Cause I looked it up and it said Jessica Drew. Is this the same person, like same name? Pretty sure. Okay. She seems like a, from the pictures I saw of like I guess the main universe Jessica Drew. She seems. Like a this is a younger version of her, yeah. A little. But was Jessica Drew in like the regular universe where Peter Parker is alive and all that? She he was Peter Parker's classmate as well, or was she older? I'm not sure. I don't think she has any real connection to Peter. He doesn't. Not really. Okay, I would I would just assume because all right. That's what tripped me up at first too, when I found out that Spider Woman had almost nothing to do with Spider Man. Hmm. So I wonder how they introduced her, like incorporate her in the story. And, um, she probably just worked for Shield still, or something similar. No, just another kid that just got bit by a spider and just had nothing to do with the other person. Yeah, I think she was a clone. She might have been a clone at some point. All right. Everyone in the Spider-Man story was a clone at one point. The '90s were weird. What do you mean? They're, they had this thing called the Clone Saga, which is a clusterfuck. And that's a story for another. <laughs> All right. Uh, one more thing. One more thing. I remember this. Uh, when they, when Miles was fighting, uh, was fighting the kangaroo. Yeah. He he put like he grabbed like he had super strength that he didn't realize that he had. Picked up a car and and like a no, it was a kangaroo. who picked up the car and Miles like hit it some type of way so it fell out of his hands and the car hit the kangaroo on his head and he didn't die and like he it, like doink and went to the side and fell on the ground. Like, yeah. God damn it. So it must be made for kids then, because I don't want to see fucking... Well, if you've got the strength to pick up a car, I'm sure your body has the strength to withstand being hit by a I car. I don't know. Strength is muscle. You can't, like, you can't... Bones can only be so strong. Maybe, I don't know. Just no, right, but, like, none of this is real. <sighs> oh, so, but I, I want to question a lot. I just want to see... Maybe that comes with time. We're reading more comic books. I can get their logic instead of my world logic. Oh, if you want to see like bloody and beaten people, start reading Punisher comics. Mm. Well, I just, I just want the logic more than the gore. Like, if... no, you don't. Come on. Okay, You're right. So Punisher is very like. Is it that? Is that the most violent of all comic books? Mainstream comic books? Possibly. You got any of those? No. Okay. Not yet. Right. I will. All right. Well, well, what, do you, what I'm going to read next time, we got a whole little stack of comic books right there. Oh. I see a lot of Marvel there. Yeah, a lot of Marvel. If you're going to read Daredevil, Punisher, Spider-Man, 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 Sp